just to start, my name is Mark Miller. I am Mark Bears' brother. Hi. <laughs> so that means Trent and Bobby's uncle and Tater's great uncle. So just to get started, um, a couple of things. You know, when you when you have sudden loss of a loved one, sometimes words just there are no words. But sometimes just being there for the family helps. So thank you all for for coming and, and sharing this event with us today. Uh, so today Trent and Ian will be doing uh, the eulogy. So I'm just I'm the MC. I'm just going to sort of juggle everybody around and make sure that everything's hopefully going on track. So I'll turn it over to Trent and Ian. Hello everybody. Thank you all for coming, for sure. Um, Taylor Andrew Jones was born in St. Paul, Alberta on May 31st, 1993 to his mom, Roberta Bobby Jones. On December 14, 2023, Taylor Jones passed away at the age of 30 years from complications due to type 1 diabetes. He is survived by his three children, Elena, Bailey, and Michael, grandparents, Marg and Gila Berge, his children's grandparents, Chris and Tammy Taylor, aunts and uncles, myself and my daughter Ava, uh, Suzanne and Jean Aubin, and their children, Janessa, Janelle, Kristen and Cody, Tiana and Dan, Bernadette and Brian Walker, Chantel, Jerry, and her children, Christian, Rianne, Brett, and Natalie, Auntie Sheila's sister-in-law, Justice, cousins Cole, Cruz, Axton, Brelin, and Cassandra, numerous friends and co-workers, including his best friend from early childhood, Ian. Uh, Taylor was predeceased by his mom, Bobby, and great-grandparents, Merton and Vera Willard. Taylor was diagnosed in February 2023 with type 1 diabetes. He struggled with his blood sugars and a small lump formed under his arm that became infected in December. A fungus that has that he was not able to survive. Taylor passed two days after the life support was removed. Even though he was only 30 years old, he was still that boy that could seem to learn to drive anything after only showing him a couple times. Yes, I'm sure there's been numerous times that he sat on my lap while driving one of mine, grandma's, or his mom's vehicles that I can't remember, but I remember the first time. He treated my truck like it was a video game, steering wheel going back and forth like he was driving an old farm truck. He was way too excited to drive, couldn't wait to get into that driver's seat, kind of like teaching him how to ride a bike. He caught on quick and would be going full speed down the sidewalk or back alley. He was a super adventurous boy and would hang out with me often in those early years, even when I'd just be going to hang out with friends. I tried to keep him away from my girlfriends, though, because he'd always steal their attention away from me. <laughs> I lived with him and his mom for a while. I remember him watching The Lion King three to four times a day. And no matter how many times he watched it, he gets so angry, yelling at the screen with incredible passion. No, Scar! <laughs> During the scene, the Scar kills Mufasa. But then I think it was channel two or five that had the TV guide, and even though Taylor couldn't read, he knew what the words, the Dukes of Hazard were. I'd have to distract him from the scrolling screen so that we didn't have to watch the Dukes for the 10th time that day. Quadding was a big passion for both of us, so as adults, we tried to get out for a ride as often as possible when I'd come to St. Paul to visit. He wasn't too keen on rules and liked to live his own rebellious sort of life, even though as a child, he wanted to be a police officer. He came and stayed with Tara and I for a while in Grand Prairie. I bought him a used bike to get to and from work, which wasn't too far down the road from our subdivision. But a couple months in, I found out he was taking my brand new quad to and from work. Besides that being against the law, I was pretty upset with him about that and hid the keys away. He didn't seem to like that too much because I don't think it was too long after that that he decided to move back to St. Paul. <laughs> Taylor's favorite band at the time was Slipknot, so I had bought four tickets to go and see them live at the MT Convention Center. Tara and I would go, and he had a friend not able to go, so it was just the three of us. 
I encouraged him to get right in the middle of the mosh pit, which he did, while Tara and I stayed on the outside of the mayhem. Unfortunately, Tara got the worst of the mosh pit with a sweaty, hairy armpit to the face. Taylor got a pretty good laugh out of that. We may have been better off in the middle of, the inst of, of it instead of the side. I also took him to System of a Down, which was an incredible experience. Not sure if he's ever been to any other concert besides those two. Taylor at one point was a Penguins fan because of Sidney Crosby, but eventually he came to his senses and became an Oilers fan. Him and his grandpa would get into it every time the Habs played the Oilers. Last time we were at St. Paul together, there was one of those games on, and again the Oilers beat the Habs. And the little smirk Taylor had on his face was priceless. He wanted to gloat a little to his grandpa, but seemed to hold it back, or at least out of my earshot anyway. So, Grandpa Guy was a big influence in his life. He was Taylor's playmate until Ian came along. They spent hours watching James Bond movie where Taylor played them so often he memorized all the words so he could speak with the actors. Whenever the weather was good, they did some golfing, played ball together, and shimmy hockey. As far as Taylor was concerned, Grandpa was the best cooker, even when Grandma called him to invite him and his mom over for Sunday dinner. Taylor would ask what Grandpa was cooking. One time, Grandpa told him that. Uh, one time, Grandma told him that she was going to cook this Sunday. There was dead silence on the end of the phone. Finally, he spoke up and said, "I think I'm going to be busy that day, Grandma." <laughs> so Grandma said, "Okay, I'll let Grandpa cook." And Taylor was all happy and anxious to go to his grandparents for supper. I'll turn over to Ian for a Today I stand before you with a heart heavy with grief and nostalgia as I reflect on the life of a friend so dear to me, Taylor. Taylor left us at a young age of 30, but in those years we cherished moments long enough to last a lifetime. Taylor and I shared a friendship that spanned nearly 28 years, basically our entire lives. Our friendship is an adventure that started on an unlikely note. We initially met at a day home where we quickly became rivals, constantly fighting and getting into trouble. Eventually, one of us ended up going to a different day home, and a little while later his mother, Bobby, stopped by our house, explaining that Taylor's grandparents lived across the street, and was wondering if the two of us could have a play date. Now obviously I was diametrically opposed to the idea, and was telling my mother, no, no, don't let him in. But she agreed, and me and Taylor quickly found common ground playing Super Mario on the NES. And from that point on, we became, we became best friends, nearly inseparable. Taylor's grandparents will always remember his little anecdotes. One evening after Sunday dinner with his great grands and grandparents, everyone was sitting watching TV except Taylor. All of a sudden, he came out of the bedroom, turned and walked smack into a wall, then started crying. Grandma asked him what he was doing and he replied, I wanted to see what it was like to be blind. They laughed and laughed, or when he got to talk to Sam on the radio before Christmas. They spoke for quite a while and then he wanted to talk to Mrs. Claus, but she was busy. He was quite upset because he wanted to make sure he was going to be okay with Santa, left her alone to go and deliver the presents. As a child, he kept his grandparents young by the silly things he would say and do. He was always so helpful when anything broke down, instantly there to help. He loved to act. He memorized the Grinch with his perfect voice, and then for Christmases thereafter, him and his cousins would create skits of the Grinch sometime during a quiet Christmas evening. He was loved by all. As a child, Taylor really wanted to be a police officer. His first riding car was a police car with a siren and everything. Later on, one of the consuls in town shared the same birthday with Taylor, so they often spent time together on their day. One Christmas, all he wanted for Christmas was a, was a police officer, so Grandma got him one. When Corporal White showed up at the door, he was in utmost disbelief. He took him out to the airport in the police car and answered all of Taylor's questions. The neighbors were very concerned when a police car with lights and sirens pulled up in front of the LeBaire's home. Taylor was in his glory. Somehow that stopped when he got older. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor and his mom traveled a lot with his grandparents. Their first trip was to Sylvan Lake when Grandpa took Taylor into the water on a floaty. Grandpa was walking along and didn't realize that Taylor had fallen off. From the beach, Grandma and Mom jumped up yelling. Until Grandpa looked back, he picked Taylor up by the scruff of his neck and plopped him back on the floaty. <laughs> Away they went like nothing ever happened. Another trip was with his cousins to Drumheller. Inside one of the buildings, suddenly, he grabs Grandma's hand on one side and Janessa's hand on the other and starts swinging his hands back and forth. Grandma was quite confused. 
The floor was made up of logs with water running in between the rest of the logs. He was swinging back and forth saying, I don't think I'm going to make it. <laughs> Grandma said, make what? He replied, to the next log. They all cracked up as there was a sheet of glass over the logs and running water. Taylor nearly fainted when Grandma walked on top of the water. <laughs> Another highlight was going to Disneyland with his cousins. They had a blast riding all the rides, especially the roller coaster. What? Lots of laughter erupted when Taylor's misconceptions. His last trip was to visit his grandparents in Arizona, and it was cer certainly the highlight for that year. Taylor had an incredible work ethic. His truck was broken down when he got called for an interview on a point about 30 minutes from here. He asked his grandma to give him to drive him there. He arrived at grandma's an hour before his appointment time and said we, he was ready to go. So away they went. She did remind him that he was half an hour early once they arrived, and he said, good, and off he went. Ten minutes later, he came out of the shop with a smile on his face. He got the job. Grandma commented that it was a very short interview. Taylor replied with the fact that the employer appreciated that he came so early and hired him on the spot. Taylor drove his quad every day to work in Up Point until his truck was repaired and ensured that he was there half an hour early every shift. Upon Grandma meeting many of his co-workers and supervisors, Taylor was always well loved. He would do his job exactly how they taught him to do it and would only deviate when necessary. Everyone loved to work with Taylor. He always arrived at half hour early to work for every job he had. The most memorable memory though was this past October when Taylor came to his grandparents' lake lot nearly every weekend with his kids. They went quadding and had lots of fun out playing outside most of the day. <coughs> Unfortunately, bears in the air left them without a campfire, but they went into the trailer and watched movies and had popcorn and treats with their dad. The kids had a wonderful time and told their dad that this was the best weekend ever. Every weekend they came. Part of what kept our friendship alive for so long is because neither of us ever really grew up. Bicycles and plastic swords, the quads, trucks, and firearms. Our toys just got bigger and more expensive, but one thing we sure still loved was Super Mario. Taylor loved the outdoors. He'd be out riding his quad, hunting, shooting guns, or skiing any chance he'd get. Even as children, our most fond memories were of us playing in the field behind the house or going to the little pond behind the Iron Horse Trail. This past summer, me and Taylor would go to the dog park in Edmonton. It was the closest thing we could get to home in St. Paul. Definitely wasn't the same as drinking beers around the fire and singing country music, but it was as close as we could get. Taylor had a way of brightening up a room with his laugh. It's one thing about him that I'll always remember. Whether it was just a quiet, sly little snicker or a burst of uncontrollable laughter, it was always worth the effort to see him laugh. Taylor had a few people guide him along in his life. One and probably the most influential, his mother Bobby, who passed away four years ago. Another, my old neighbor and friend, Mike Furby, whom he was very close with, but unfortunately passed away a couple months shy of eight years ago, on March 24, 2016. Well, none of them were spoken more highly of than Taylor's uncle Trent. From when we were children all the way until adulthood, Taylor was always fond of Trent and would talk about him all the time. Taylor is a great soul and a dear friend. Skeet shooting and drinks around the fire will never be the same without you. You changed all our lives when you entered them, and once again, our lives are forever changed as you leave us behind. That's I have a letter here from. Uh, Craig Martin, who worked with him at Extreme, he writes, Hello everyone, my name is Craig Martin, also known as Marty for people I worked with. I had the privilege to work with Taylor for two years. He was an amazing worker that seemed to have a lot of stress in his life. He spent long days together, or we spent long days together at work and would talk a lot about family, life, women, life in general. I had a special... I had a special place in my heart for him and considered myself kind of like a father figure for him. I helped Taylor in tough times get through his anger issues and he was an ear for me for my ongoing issues as well. I'm so proud of the man he became and the tough times he had to endure. I hope one day when his children are old enough to understand that they know how much he overcame and how much of a hard worker that their dad was for them. I hope they learn how much hard work and perseverance 
means in today's world. He worked his butt off for his kids against everything thrown his way. I was very grateful that I was able to say goodbye to you, my friend. I know we drove around and you would call me old dad at work when you needed my help. But to be honest, I've always considered you like a son. Rest easy, bud, and look down on me from time to time. And make sure I'm not out of line. And he said, give Bobby a big hug for me as well. <coughs> so, that last, that uh, family was reading was sort of the first story. We're opening up the floor now to anybody who wants to tell a story about Trent or to Mr. Taylor. Tell a story about Trent too if you want. It's really not a main focus right now. So if anybody has any stories or anything, we don't have a microphone, so if you just want to stand up, raise your hand and then stand up. Um, I think I'll probably start just to get the ball rolling and if, if that's it, then we'll just move on to the slideshow. I'm sort of the distant uncle. We live in central Alberta, so the only time that I ever got to see Taylor was at special events, you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving and things like that. But I remember the very first time that he came to our place in Lacombe for Christmas. He was, I don't know if he was two, maybe three years old. And behind our house was the school, and behind it was a little lake that the school always cleared off all winter long so that people go skating on it. Well, we had a pair of skates that are, were originally for our son. They got passed down to our youngest daughter, and so they're just very small skates, but he was only two or three years old, but he was determined he wanted to go skating, so and being a good Canadian kid, he knew that he'd learned quite quickly that if you have enough pairs of socks, any pair of skates is going to fit. So, <laughs> so we bundled them up and we went skating, and well, you can imagine, I don't know if it was his first time skating, it probably was, but I'm not 100% sure of that. I know that... Uh, it, it wasn't pretty, but <laughs> what he lacked in experience and talent and coordination, he made up for with determination. He was determined he was going to learn how to skate. And I don't know for sure if he did actually learn. It was too long for me to remember now, but I know that he left our place that Christmas with those skates. So. <laughs> Does anybody else have any, anything they want to tell us about Taylor? Okay. Okay, so I guess we'll just move on to the slideshow then. We have a slideshow of uh, just to show a little bit of Taylor's life. Well, Mama told me. When I was young Said sit beside me My only son And listen closely To what I say And if you do this It'll help you Some sunny day I yet we Take your time Don't live too fast Troubles will come And they will pass You'll find a warm mom And you'll find love And don't forget that There is a someone Up above Yeah. 
get you lost from the rich man's gold. All that you need now is in your soul, and you can do this, oh baby, if you try. All that I want from you, my son, is to be satisfied and be a simple kind of man. Be something you love and understand, baby. Be a simple. Follow your heart and nothing else, and you can do this, oh baby, if you try. All that I want from you, my son, is to be. I just wish that I could talk to you again somehow, some way. Even if it's for a moment, so I can hear you say, "Don't cry for me, I'm alright. I'm better than you know." And this life can be a shorter ride, so don't wait. Sit on sorrow and just hold on to those moments and the memories we shared. We're both headed for the same place anyway. I just beat you there. Don't waste it on time 
I just beat you there And as each day goes by I get a little bit stronger But that don't stop me from wishing you We're here a little bit longer Christmas for the family. They provided Christmas presents for the kids, uh, flowers and treats for the changer and the various family. Uh, and they're also the ones that have started the Go Family account. Uh, yeah, this is on your program if you want to help. You know, I think it's on the back page. Uh, that's to help with funeral expenses and, of course, with helping raise the kids in the future. So anything you can do to help would be greatly appreciated for that. Um, Mark would have been completely lost while well, helping Nicole from Richard Caswell. She helped her dealing with the uh, benefits and, and the life insurance uh, companies as well. Taylor was very appreciative of his work and it was very obvious by how they stepped step forward. Uh, so the families want to thank them very much. So I think now, I don't see it. Oh, um, yeah, we, we're going to be having lunch in this room here. So if we could move over to the other side, then the volunteers will set up all the tables in here, and then we can move back in here and have lunch together. Again, thank you all for coming.